Thank you for joining. In the previous lessons, we have completed all necessary steps to prepare the project for endpoints and controllers, including the SQL database migration and creation. In this lesson, we are going to create endpoints and controllers to be ready to perform CRUD operations with the database. In the project folder, let's right-click on the controllers folder and choose Add Controllers, then select Controller Empty from the API section. As you may remember from a few lessons ago, these steps are pretty standard and well known to you. We need to name the controller, and the controller suffix in the name is required to have this file recognized by Netcore as a controller. I'll name it Solar Systems Controller. I'll quickly remind you that the controller word in the attribute will be replaced with the actual controller name without the controller suffix from the file name. And this is called token replacement, so this endpoint will look like localhost, then port, API, solar systems. Additionally, the API controller attribute, which is also provided during controller creation, is responsible for automatic model validation. If the incoming request data doesn't pass the model validation, the framework will automatically return a 400 bit request response with details about the validation errors. Now let's create the action method. It will be a get all request, so the action method named get all will also be decorated with the HTTP method type HTTP get. And this method will be filled with hard coded data to try out the endpoint in Swagger before we proceed with the endpoint any further. I will create a list here and store it in a variable called solar systems. And our list will contain all the necessary properties we declared in the solar system model. If you cannot remember the list and its types, you can simply expand your model. And all items will be available here in the Solution Explorer. I will create the required items in accordance with their types. And the image can be taken from any resource you like, or skipped since it's nullable. So the first set of data is ready, and now let's duplicate it to add the second part of the data. At this stage, you can use any data you like, since we will delete this data as soon as we have tested the endpoint. And of course, we need to return something. So let's return the OK method, including a message and the data itself. The endpoint logic at the moment is minimal. We just need to test it first and then extend it with additional logic. Let's build it. Now we need to verify the result. You can use any tool you like, either Postman or Swagger. I will use Swagger. So we now have these three controllers here in Swagger. The first one, weather focused, which was provided by the Netcore template when we started the project. The second one, planets, which we created a few lessons ago. And the current one we just created. First, we can click Get. And after receiving a successful reply, we can click Try it and then press Execute. The endpoint has replied with the hard coded data and the message. So we are good to proceed and extend the controller with real logic to get the data from the database. To do that, we can use the injected HiKaiTalkDB context class, which is available to use inside the project. First, we need to create a constructor and a field. We will get the HiKaiTalkDB context injected into the constructor and then make it available using a private field. We don't need the hard coded data code any longer, so we can delete it. Since we have an injection of our HiKaiTalkDB context, which is actually a reference to the properties inside the HiKaiTalkDB context class, these three properties are available for us by their names. Let's use them. I will simply write HiKaiTalkDB context solar systems to list. Also, since the return statement already contains the variable name, there is no need to make any changes there. Tracing the chain from the HiKaiTalkDB context class via the Solar Systems reference, which leads us to the DB context, we can access the database directly. Let's open Swagger again, press Try, and execute. We receive this reply. And of course, the data is empty since the database is empty. Now let's open SQL Server Management Studio and open the Solar Systems table just to confirm it's empty. And indeed, it's empty. Next, we will test to verify that the empty reply in Swagger is coming from the database. 
To add some simple test data, we can write a quick query. I have prepared this query, selected and executed. Then select it again and execute it. Now the database is updated with the hard coded values. If we go back to Swagger and send the request again, we will get the reply accordingly. And the data we have just hard coded will be displayed. So we have successfully completed all the steps for testing the endpoint, including the database query. In the next lesson, we will extend the logic of the controller and implement a search within the database using an ID. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!